Hey folks, meet Jon Snow. He's called the father of epidemiology. And if you know what that means, I'm impressed. I had to check it out. It's science speak for the study of diseases. Jon Snow was a cool and nerdy doctor back in the 1800s who made a big impact on public health. And we're going to find out about him. John Snow was born in York, England in 1813. He lived at the same time as Abraham Lincoln, Queen Victoria, Charles Dickens and Mary Seacole. His family didn't have much money and they lived in a small house in York. His father was a labourer in the coal yard and little John was the first of nine children. John Snow's father started out poor but he worked hard, saved his money, and soon he bought a horse and cart and set up a transport business. <laughs> John was able to go to school and learn to read and write, unlike many children of poor parents. He was a maths brain box from an early age and did well in class. At 14, he left school and traveled north to be an apprentice to an apothecary in Newcastle. There were no official medical schools. You needed to learn from an apothecary who treated the sick with potions, creams, and herbal remedies. Shortly afterwards, he did what we would call an internship with Mr. Warburton, another licensed apothecary near York. He studied hard, saved money, and lived quietly with Mr. Warburton and his family. He became a vegetarian, an unusual lifestyle choice in those days. He was also teetotal, which means he drank no alcohol at all. Today, he might have been a fitness freak, but back then, he was known as an exceptional swimmer, plunging into the cold river Tyne in northern England. His apprenticeship's finally over. John Snow set off for London, where he enrolled in a private medical college set up by John Hunter, a distinguished doctor. Now he started practicing medicine and soon became a respected member of the Royal College of Physicians. He had arrived! Now, imagine having your leg amputated with no pain relief. <coughs> Anesthetics were still in the early stages and it was our guy Jon Snow who worked out how to use ether and chloroform safely in medical operations. He was such a pro at anesthesia that Queen Victoria herself asked him to administer chloroform when she gave birth to her eighth and ninth children. Do put me under, Mr. Snow. But his biggest moment came in 1854 with a bad outbreak of that nasty disease cholera in Broad Street in the middle of London. Hang on a minute, what exactly is cholera? It's a disease that attacks your intestine. The bacteria lives in human poo. After the first signs of vomiting and diarrhea, without medical help, you can be dead in a few hours. But no one knew how it was spreading. Back then, people didn't have running water in their homes. They came out to a pump in the street to collect water in buckets. Good old Jon Snow. He had a hunch that it was transmitted through dirty water. How could he prove this? Methodical and nerdy, he made a map of the area around the Broad Street water pump. 500 deaths within 250 metres of the water pump showed him that the dirty water from the pump was the source of the disease. He was so sure of his theory that he asked the London town officials to remove the handle of the pump so that no one could draw water. Almost instantly, the cholera outbreak disappeared. It turned out that a baby's poo-filled nappy, infected with cholera, had been washed in water that had leaked into the Broad Street well. Other doctors were not convinced. They thought that the disease floated around in smelly air called miasma. It wasn't until the next cholera outbreak that they all saw that Jon Snow's theory was right. Cholera spreads through dirty water. Poor Jon Snow. He didn't live long. He never married and... Despite his healthy lifestyle, he died of a stroke, alone in his London home at only 45. But I think he'd be pleased to know that his name still lives on now, almost 200 years later, as the father of epidemiology. <laughs>